Hello, darlings. This is Heidi, and I thought today I would read a poem by a friendly acquaintance of mine, Rob Foxcroft, who lives in England and is a focusing teacher and a developer of something he calls meditative listening. And he wrote this sort of poem called Touching the Source that I'm going to jump into kind of midway through. Okay, so I want to begin with a section called Paths. The first one is Befriending. You are not the feeling. You yourself are not any content. You sit down quietly next to the feeling. You become profoundly feeling-centered. You are here to listen with interest and great kindness to an emerging story. Here to be fearless and sincere with yourself about how things are going or not going in your life right now. You are preparing a friendly welcome since the feeling may be about to open. Or maybe not. Sometimes it seems as if nothing will ever change. Still, you can be with the way it is. We can be gentle, accepting, patient, and enduring. Nothing has to happen. We can always be kind, actively unknowing. We can't know what may come. We may be carried far beyond our limitations. Something shadowy and unformed is beginning to stir in the silence of the heart. You are dwelling here for a little while waiting, asking, and holding. It is essential to be uncertain, open, curious, unintrusive, and deeply receptive, listening to one another with compassion. Contact. Contact is the key to any friendship. Until we are in contact, the good which may happen is severely limited and the evil lowering. When there is a real sense of meeting or encounter, an awareness of a living contact, actively sustained moment after moment after moment, a profound mutual sense of accepting and being accepted by one another may creep up on us. A quality of trust and safety flowers, and a sense of rapport or mutual resonance may grow naturally. Being in contact is a miracle, both in itself and in its creative and healing power. Humanity. Everything we have learned or can imagine is with us. Our feelings, memories, dreams, and reflections inform our meeting, and yet nothing must come between us nor disturb what is unfolding. Our sensitivity to the human condition is a vast and subtle background which profoundly illuminates what is happening here. Humanity is imagination, out of which empathy is possible. There is a clear duty to be vividly alive, to be in the body, to bring to our listening our whole experience of ourselves, of persons, and of the world, insofar as we can. The person we are listening to has a right to expect that, because otherwise what we are offering is inescapably, in the present moment, an experience of conditionality, isolation, ambiguity, abandonment, and betrayal. Humanity is about standing in the open, about having the courage to be defenseless, about fully engaging with one another, with the whole of our being. Humanity is about being aware of our own feelings, reflecting and refusing. As a person says each little piece, you say back the whole felt essence of it. The person tends to pause, asking, is that right? Listening is easy when the person refuses to be misunderstood. Both people are taking great care that what is being said is heard in just the way that it is meant, that nothing gets twisted or heard in a merely conventional sense. In this way, we know that what is meant is what is heard, and so you and your companions stay close together. Even so, some of what comes may be private just for the person. A listener is not a guide. Your work as a listener is to enter the other person's world, as if it is your own, but always without losing the as if. 
always following, never losing sight of the person, the one who's carrying this weight of experiencing, living it, going through both the pain and the joy of it. Our being together is gentle, vivid, friendly, supple, easy, and respectful. There is a natural sway here, to and fro, flowing forward. Sensing and saying may tend to slow down, gradually becoming clear, deep, wide, and strongly forward-moving. Listening is very peaceful. Listening is easy. You can do it. From ancient times, listening to ourselves and to others has brought gifts of imagination, vision, blessing, and healing. What happens may be surprising. What comes may be fresh and new, forceful and active, or tender and heartwarming. So there's a little more that follows, and there was a little bit before that, but I'll stop there. So, um, you know, I think there ends up being in the world of focusing all these conversations about what it is and what it isn't and how it works. And I love the simplicity of Rob's poem and the directness and just the feeling, the refreshingness of that way of being together and what he's describing and implying. There, There's definitely a reaching for something deeper than what we normally contact. But the important part isn't the finding something deeper. It's the being present to what wants to be expressed and to really hearing each other, to sitting down and being kind and being open and curious and not assuming we know and not needing to fix anyone or figure anything out for someone, but just being empathically present. And I have a friend who lives here, goes by Wakil. He has used Rob Foxcroft's work around meditative listening and combined it kind of with some other stuff that he's learned about and thought about. And his way now of approaching this stuff is to not even worry about calling it focusing, but just to call it listening. Uh, Attuned listening, I think, is his term. But the idea being that rather than trying to do something technically complicated, just creating little communities of people interested in really hearing each other and really being present and letting things open up and flow rather than, I don't know, rather than having an agenda to achieve something or change someone or get somewhere, just to be, just to pause everything. I really, I'm so drawn to this way of being with people. It's a re- like, it's a really different kind of orientation. And it's, oh, it's what drew me to my mentor. She's all about receptive presence. And it's something I really admire about Rob, that he had aspires to this and something I care about cultivating in my own life. I don't know, know, it just seems so special. I I think uh, most of us just don't get listened to enough. Anyway, I just, I like the idea of being a person in the world who is ready to hear everybody. So yeah, I guess that, that is a part of my heart's intention. I want to have more people in my life who are interested in connecting in that way. And also to make myself available for people who have stuff to say that nobody else wants to hear or, or, or just who who want to tell it to me for whatever reason. So anyway, I've mentioned it before, but I'm doing empathic listening sessions over Zoom for a limited number of people. Uh, And if you're interested in, in trying that out sometime, let me know. And I'll make sure to put all my contact info in the show notes. All right, darlings. Thanks for listening. Have a day. <laughs> I don't feel like I can suggest having a good day. I don't know how that's possible right now, but maybe it is. If you if if you're having a good day, I hope it keeps going. Take care, darlings. Bye bye. <laughs>